my dear brother beloved brothers and sisters friends and visitors and all those who are viewing viewing online and i greet you all in the name of jesus our lord it's a great joy to be among you today and our lord is most gracious and merciful to make way for everyone to be assembled here in his holy name that we may praise him thank him for all the benefits we have been receiving from the throne of his grace and today let's be attentive and let's lend our ears so that our hearts may be touched people from time immemorial immemorial have been following traditions fables and fictions just for an example i would bring you an illustration around 350 bc the great greek philosopher aristotle used to i i mean he discovered that the spider has six legs and all along for centuries after centuries people believed that the spider has six legs no one even thought of counting how many legs the spider has ever until someone in the last century he came to discover and he sat down and counted and how many how many legs does a spider have any of you know even today how many of you, how many of you have counted if the spider has six legs or any more he discovered that the spider has i didn't hear any answer from you how many eight eight legs until then people bother not you know traditions and beliefs wrong beliefs and falsehood and all these things are believed to be so even though they are wrong praise the lord i am glad to be among a people who have studied the word of god to the core and have found the treasure in the word of god that we are worshiping him in spirit and truth let's look at how far are we from the home how far we have achieved the time is my it is sooner than we expect the lord's coming is closer we are at the threshold of heaven almost the earthly history is about to close shall we remain indolent and indifferent or would say like the slothful servant that the lord delayeth his coming or in the day of no people lend not lend not their ears and they just remain idle indolent and nova in fact became the object of mockery and praise the lord what he preached came to be true and what of us today now we are almost coming closer to the end the lord is returning and how far we have prepared ourselves to meet our lord in the air is the big question that i would like to place before you in romans chapter 13 verse 12, 11 and 12 says 
The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. It clearly shows us the nearness of time of our Lord's return. As people of God, we need to prepare ourselves, get ready, and should be on the mark, ready to go, ready to do God's work. In Evangelism, page 29, we read, the work that should long ago have been in active operation to win souls to Christ has not been done. The time is near when large cities will be swept away and all should be warned of those impending or coming judgments. Brethren, we need to do something for the cause of God. And God, as people of God, we have a greater responsibility to commit ourselves to do a greater task for him who hath, by his mercy and grace, embraced us into the fold of his love. In Evangelism, page 29 continues, oh, that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities now almost given to idolatry. In many churches, what happens today? Tragically, the pastor has become the primary shepherd, soul winner, fundraiser, organizer, administrator, and an errand boy. But it should be the other way around. According to the word of God, the people and the believers of the church, they should come forward and go forth in the fields to win souls for the fold of Christ. And this is everywhere almost lacking. And yesterday, Brother Suresh Kumar was mentioning that one friend brings one friend and the multiplication will be exponential. It is true. And he said one friend, perhaps a year, but I would say one friend for a quadrennium. Am I stooping low to bring less number? If we bring one soul, every member gains one soul per quadrennium, in next session we will have, if the Lord doesn't return, we will have double fold. Am I right? Are we doing that? Or are we committing ourselves to do so? Maybe from this moment on. And here, according to the word of God, however, it is actually the members in the pews who are to be the primary shepherds of the flock, the primary soul winners. And as long as this doesn't take place, we will be having few souls known to Christ. And Christ would really, indeed, delaying his coming. And we need not to be one of those who caused the delay of Christ's coming. In Gospel Workers, page 351, we read, the work of God in this earth can never be finished until the men and women comprising our church membership rally to work and unite their efforts with those of ministers and church officers. Brethren, here is record of you, your involvement, your commitment, and your advocacy of the gospel. We have to join our hands because the Bible says that we are co-laborers together with God, both for our own salvation and also for the salvation of others. And this should be ever lingering in our mind. We are here as 
the children of God, members of the true church on the earth. And then it becomes our duty and it becomes our indebtedness to do our part and the Lord would do his part. And ultimately we will have a greater harvest in the days to come. <clears throat> and many times we fail in our approach. If we can recall the year 1888, what was the need for, by the way, for the message of 1888? We all know that it was because they lost the centrality of Jesus. They focused many things other than Christ. Being a Christian, our approach should always be, and more so for we are reformers, our approach should be having learned that 1888 message, Christ our righteousness, we should focus always Christ and Christ in all and in all. That should be our focus. In Luke chapter 10, verse 2, again we read that the harvest is a plenty and the laborers are few. Brethren and sisters, the Lord wants you to be laboring for him. The Lord invites you to care for the needy, to follow the pure religion, to care for the widow, to visit the fatherless. We read in the Bible, this is the thing. Pure religion is this, to visit the fatherless and to assist the widows and so forth. In James 1.27, we read. And we need to be following this, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, I have known our members are so, you know, heavy with burden and weep with those who weep, cry with those who cry, and laugh with those who laugh. When I am present in this meeting, I can see the faces of the brethren and sisters smiling and joyous and always pleasing, greeting one another, embracing one another. Nowhere you will find in the Christian dumb as we do because we are brothers and sisters. And let us focus on the work before us. <clears throat> now, when we present the gospel, we present Christ as the center one. And further, here are four simple steps that I would like to present before you. Number step one. We have made a great gulf between God and ourselves. In other words, we have, we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us, we cannot boast of our righteousness. We cannot think that we are exalted and elevated and we are above other Christians, or we are above other brethren, and we cannot maintain the attitude holier than thou. But rather, we should humbly submit before the Lord that I am a sinner. For the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And step number two, if we have committed sin, then in Romans 6.23 says that for the wages of sin is death. If we have committed sin, we are surely to face death. This is the second step that we should realize. For the Bible says so. The day that you do eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, and, of, knowledge of good and evil, you shall die. And that disobedience caused death. And ultimately, when we commit sin, whenever we commit sin, we pay way that 
death should overtake us. But praise the Lord. See the next. In Isaiah chapter 53, 5. We are not doomed. And there is a ray of hope at the horizon. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Praise the Lord. Jesus has come to rescue us, and he has volunteered to die in our stead, in, stead of, in your stead and my stead, that we might live, and we, must, we might enjoy the fullness of life. And this is the third step, that God, Christ died for all. You and me. And the fourth step, we have sinned, and we have come short of the glory of God, that's step one. Number two, the wages of sin is death. Number three, Christ has come to rescue us, and he died in our stead. Number four, in such a case, when we accept him as our personal savior, when we come to the throne of his grace, and he is ready to accept us, all those who, has, who have received him, he has given power to become sons and daughters. And therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that gulf, that gap, now is maintained and rebuilt, and we are connected with God again. We are abridged, or, I mean, we are connected by this great sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary. My dear brethren, have you ever thought of that scenery of Gethsemane and that scenery of Calvary? Whenever I ponder over that, I used to weep. Indeed, the Lord has done great things for us that you must, you and I may live. <clears throat> brethren, <clears throat> After having received Jesus as our personal savior and having a renewed life and have been, have been born into the family of God, adopted in the family of God, now your testimony and my testimony, personal testimonies will lead us to bring souls unto the fold of Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. We have ample occasions wherein we share testimonies and we share witnesses. And doing, by doing so, we can bring the good tidings to everyone and how it should be presented. <clears throat> Last night it was brought to you the Samaritan woman. And it was wonderful. She shared her personal testimony with the town or village she belonged to. But another illustration that I would also give, the man who was cast out of devils, to him Jesus says, return to your own house and tell what great things God had done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done unto him. Have you ever attempted to tell what great things God had done unto you? Don't we see in our daily life that God miraculously saves us protect us uh, in our daily movements, in our going out and coming in as he has promised. Is he not delivering us? Even protecting us from all harms and dangers? Snares of Satan? He does. Then it, is, it becomes our duty to share the testimony. And more so, we, the people of God who possess the testimony of Jesus, we have more right and more 
reasons to share our testimonies. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that they may declare the praises of him who has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. In Desire of Ages, page 347, we read, that which will be most effectual is the testimony of our own experience. These precious acknowledgments to the praises of the glory of his grace, when supported by Christ-like life, have an irresistible power that works for the salvation of soul. <clears throat> and now, when we present our testimony, it should be threefold. My life before I knew Christ, and how I became Christ, or what motivated me to become a Christian. <clears throat> and I had a video clip, but unfortunately, it could not be uh, placed here for technical reasons. But however, my life before accepting Jesus and how I became a Christian and my life after I had become a Christian. This way we can present our testimonies to people around us, to our friends and relatives and so forth. And I also would like to recall the method that is prescribed in Matthew chapter 28 you know, you drop a stone in a still water. Then it goes as waves. It was still, but when they drop, or the knowledge of Christ is shown, then there's waves. Meaning, you must approach the close by people first. You know, a stranger would not accept your sayings and your testimony and so forth. Rather, those who know you very dearly, they will accept whatever you tell them first. Number two, our life should be reflecting Christ. That is more important. You know, we cannot just tell them good tidings when we don't practice that which we preach. This is more important. <clears throat> now, being Christians, having good countenance, we should always try to make friends also. You know, when I, I, I had an extensive traveling uh, experience, and I had worked in Africa for 12 years and Asia another eight years, having traveled, whenever I had a small opportunity, I would not fail to make use of it. And I always, I always share the experiences. And that is how we have to be like Christians. We need to express the love of Christ with whomsoever we meet. And now, that's not enough. Making friends for Christ and having made friends, we should also manifest the love of Christ. It should dwell in us and also it should be exhibited so that they will understand that we belong to Christ and we carry the love of Christ and Christ is in us. Okay? <clears throat> now, kindness can be exhibited sometime by words of expression, but sometime deeds that would reveal that we love them near around us. You know, here you see that uh, when people are in need, we need to help them. And you can see the list of things that you can do in order to not attract the people, but in order to make them understand the gospel of Christ is love sended. <clears throat> Ministry of Healing, how our success is this one, and also many times we also fail in our approach because we know not how to present or how to prepare even Bible studies. And we need to, you know, make a thorough preparation before we present ourselves before people. <clears throat> now, that uh, again, let me, get, for want of time, I'll rush to the, uh, my report. This is Asia, my region, Composes 
from the Mediterranean shore to Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia. And you can see the map there covering Middle East, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Bhutan, Nepal, and so forth. <clears throat> and you can see them number of countries and if you look at the list i don't want to read all of them and another list all of them belonging to other religions no christian country in africa when i was serving we find many difficulties, but they were financial and some other hardship. You know, traveling would be hard. Sometimes we have to shovel the sand and push the vehicle and so forth. Not proper air transportation, aeroplanes landing on gravels, and all these things. But in Asia, when I am serving, it's far more difficult region than you think. Because these are pagan nations, and always we find persecutions, banning of conversion, and even the slightest provoking I would not say provoking, just a sign that would do, that you would provoke the anger of the people. You know, many times, this is our danger. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the Lord is great, and he has been wonderful in guiding us. We have planted many new churches in Asia. I don't know. These are <clears throat> churches that we had planted. A church in Kerala, Trandram. A church at Ponur. In fact, they, they are new interested souls in Andhra Pradesh. And Jangarati Argulam in Andhra Pradesh. Nellur in Andhra Pradesh. And Rajamundri in Andhra Pradesh. And Vishavapatnam in Andhra Pradesh and Uthukota in Thiruvallur, Tamil Nadu. These are new places that we have entered in. And as I said, that we drop in the water a stone, then the waves. So this is closest to the area where our work is established. So we are moving slowly to the neighboring states and neighboring states and so forth. And we have also developed the work in Thailand. Brother Roli, who belongs to Asian, I mean, uh, Pacific region, he had his people in Thailand, and they could, uh, in fact, some teachers went there to work in Thailand from Philippines, and they had created some contacts, and ultimately, a worker was sent, and recently we had been there. Looking at the picture, you will see uh, myself with the brethren and also Brother Lori, uh, Roli um, rising up his hand while we were having Bible studies. In this place, the brother who accepted the message, he was having uh, two queries before he would be baptized. One was the vegetarianism, then number two, rebaptism. Then upon my arrival, I myself, I gave a study, and also Brother Roli gave a study, and ultimately he was quite clear, and he wanted to be baptized, and I think last week he was baptized. Praise the Lord. <coughs> and this is another place in Andhra Pradesh where our interest is developed. And I also received an email forwarded from the General Conference 
an interest that is shown from the country of Yemen. Yemen is known for, you know, I don't need to mention, you know, it is a hub for terrorism, you know, terror heaven. But from there, you, you can read through, a brother is manifesting his interest and he wants to join us. And we, I have contacted him and I haven't received a reply from him yet. Before that, I came to the session. And it is a council meeting in South India and brother and our doing great work in that part of the world. And here is another picture. And the next picture is also, is a place where we established a new church, which is called Trandrum, a state called Kerala in the southernmost part of India. And though few in number, they are very enthusiastic and they are learning the word of God. And it was, I was pre preaching and the brother was translating and another brother who is the contributing factor, he is a worker from Bangalore. Bangalore is an IT hub for the world actually and from that city he hails from. And this is another uh, family who is willing to join us and brother Raj Shaker is sitting close by who is the contributing factor for reaching these souls. <clears throat> and a seminar was held, Brother Peter Loswich and Brother Dragon Ivanov, they were there. And you can see their presentation along with Brother Alvin. And this is another seminar that is held at Ponur, Andhra Pradesh. And the people were really interested and they called for baptisms. And as soon as I returned from here and I would go and stay and teach, him, teach them thoroughly. Uh, in fact, they had been um, studying the word of God for a long time, but now it's the high time that they be baptized. <clears throat> and the brethren were garlanded as a token of welcome. This is the way that they do in India. And this is a house that visited during our trip. And this house, you know, has a full of uh, holes on the roof. And I asked them, what would you do uh, if it is rains? They said, oh, we would be sitting all night uh, if it is raining. But during the daytime, all the people will go to work and I, we will go to their houses and sleep. This is what they told and they, I wanted to take them a picture along with, with the worker also. Please pray for these people, brethren. And in the end, I will also say that there are great many persecutions in India. And I had for that also some clips, but unfortunately they could not be loaded here. And it's indeed painful as much as India is now ruled by, you know, pro-Hindus. Several times we face these difficulties. Some websites I have given, but not a problem. But before I conclude, I would invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, to ponder over a little bit. What are we and who are we and how much we can do unto the Lord? <clears throat> a small illustration. I am left with only 45 sec 46 seconds. There was a young man and he approached a wise man in a city and he wanted to know the truth. The young man wanted to know the truth and the wise man to teach him. But the wise man took him along, walked and walked, walked to the seashore. And he took him and put him in the water. And the man went into the water, hip level, and pressed him inside. And the young man was doing like that, wanted to come out, wanted to breathe some air, twice, thrice. And the man was suffocated almost, and he asked the wise man, why are you doing this? And the wise man answered, how much you suffered for getting oxygen, and more than that, you should suffer, and you should venture in order to know the truth. 
May God bless each one of us. And let this thought be planted in our mind and heart and soul that we may accept Christ and also we may dig deeper in order to learn the truth, study the word of God to show that you are approved unto God. God bless us all. Amen.